this is it. All the bags are packed, the car is loaded, and now we're heading for the airport. 10 days of a, an amazing dream trip for me, hunting Ibex in Kyrgyzstan. It's gonna be beautiful. For me, the adventure always begins right here in my driveway. It's the whole trip that matters to me, not just the animal we're hunting or the trophy. It's meeting the locals, it's seeing the scenery and just experiencing everything about the trip. So the adventure begins now, and now we're going to the airport. Welcome to Kyrgyzstan. We've been driving for six, seven hours. Now we swap to this beautiful Russian car and it's going to drive us for the last six hours to base camp. We are at 3,700 meters. It's windy. It's about zero degrees and it's cold. Lots of snow, much more snow than I anticipated. But uh, we'll see what happens when we get to base camp and the hunting area. Right now we're leaving and tomorrow we're going hunting. We are at the first base camp. <coughs> we are about 3,500 meters up. It's a perfect average height for where we're gonna hunt. So it's also a perfect place to control shoot the rifle and the scope. We've put a box out and a target for 200 meters. And um, it's always important to control shoot your rifle when you get to where you're gonna hunt. Especially up here in the thin air, it might very well affect the bullet. So. Um, Let's see how it goes.
driving about two hours from the lodge. We have now changed to horses and we've got a four hour ride ahead of us. Um, my, my horse's name is uh, apparently Toro, which I think is a, a bit too masculine and wild for me. I would have loved her or him to be named something uh, gentler. But until now, he's uh, behaving. We're walking at a slow trot up the mountain. It's snowing, it's cold, but it's so beautiful. And this is all part of the experience. Uh, four hours of this, then we get to the hunting lodge and uh, we'll have some dinner and sleep a little bit. And then tomorrow morning at three o'clock, we go hunting. I can't wait. Two hours of riding in the snow and the sleet and the wind has brought us to our hunting base camp. It's uh, at 3600, 3800 meters. And up in these mountains, the ibex live right next to uh, snow leopards. I'm sensing a lot of this hunt is gonna be from the horse or not hunting from the horse, but we're gonna spend a lot of time on the horses. Without my education from back home, from my sweet instructor Louise, my very patient instructor Louise, just these two hours would have been a hell. The saddles, or if you can call them a saddle, is made out of cast iron and two wooden boards, a blanket, and then a, a small pillow. It's tough terrain. The horses are trotting and walking fast, even up and down, and it's tough on the body. You have to uh, really follow the horse's movement, otherwise it's gonna be a hell. Right now we are waiting for some warm tea and then maybe this afternoon we can go hunt for an ibex. I can't wait. It's uh, 7.30 in the morning, it's been snowing all night and uh, right now we are riding out because the guides, they spotted some ibex down here in the valley. We are riding along the ridge up here to get down into the valley to get some better wind. The wind is in our back now. So if we ride along here for a few kilometers, we can come back to the Ibex in, in good wind. Uh, oh, now it's moving fast. We uh, spotted Ibex yesterday evening and uh, it was snowing so bad that we couldn't hunt them. But just to, to see the Ibex for the first time was amazing. Now we're actually hunting. We're hunting as a group. So we, uh, we draw pegs for who's going to shoot first. That's going to be Christian. Then I'm second and Mel is third. 
if there's a chance to shoot more than one animal out of a group, I think we might do that. Otherwise we might split up and hunt in different valleys. But uh, I don't know yet. This is our first day Ibex hunting. The weather is great, it's a bit cold. Snow everywhere. And I'm loving every second of it. Man ved, når man så ser dem, så kan man slet ikke forstå, at man ikke har set Men det ligner sten. Det er lidt, når man bare... De er så langt væk, jeg ikke kan måle. same direction all the time, not too much change of wind, which is really good. So now we're going to see if we can get to this group down here. As far as I could see, there was about 10-15 Ibex. So hopefully there's a big mature buck, but we'll see. with about 20 ibex. They were coming up the mountain. It's like home in Europe that the animals, they come out to feed in the morning and the evening. So every morning the ibex leaves the peaks and they walk down to the valley to eat grass. And we caught them halfway up this slope. I guess the wind <coughs> caught us, so they got wind of us because they ran relatively quick up the mountain. We tried chasing them with the horses, so we rode quite fast across this rock slide with loose rocks and large rocks. And a lot of times the horses, they, they 
dipped on one leg or they slided with the rocks and it was uh, <clears throat> exciting horse riding. It's uh, important to, to hold on with your legs and don't use your stirrups or your hands to hold on because uh, the horse doesn't like that too much. The guys just spotted two ibex behind us, about 600 meters. So we're gonna sit here a little while and see if they're moving up or down. So um, we'll see what happens. The beauty of the mountains is uh, amazing and it's it's hard to close your eyes when you're looking at, at this beautiful scenery. So it's really difficult to imagine that the Ibex are living right up there on the peaks. I wouldn't imagine anything wanting to live up there, but um, these beautiful animals, they live up there and they feed down here. So I think we're gonna have a cup of tea and maybe try to, to sleep a little bit. It's gonna be a long wait. But when they get here, it's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> right in the middle of our tea break, the guy had spotted some ibex just up here on, on the mountain, right on the skyline, so you can see the curved horns. Beautiful. So now the idea is for them to walk down the mountain, up behind this big rock, we'll be able to shoot down into the valley. We climb for about 200 meters, and I'm starting to get my breath back now, but hopefully we have some time to settle down. But the Ibex are moving down from the mountain now. Seven and a half hours, we've waited for the Ibex to come down from the mountain. We've waited in the cold, it was windy. The ground is cold, it's very steep. Not a very pleasant position to be in for a long period of time. My legs are cold, my bum is cold. About two hours ago, the Ibex finally left the mountain top. They've been standing there for five hours silhouetted against the sky. You could see the horns and everything. It was beautiful. But the, the idea or the, the wish was that they would pass us here at this big rock within three, 400 meters. But unfortunately, they took a different route and they passed us seven or 800 meters away. We had no chance of getting closer because of this open ground. So, now we are waiting for the other guy to bring the horses. Then we're going back to the cabin for some food, some warmth. I'm absolutely freezing. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to come back because apparently this is where they want to feed. So we'll try a different approach tomorrow morning. But uh, for now, about an hour, hour and a half of waiting, even more. And then we're going home.
new hunting day. We've uh, ridden out into this valley that just goes on for miles and miles behind me. The sun is shining, quite a strong wind. I'm not feeling too well today. I have a headache, nausea, all my muscles ache or hurt. If it's the long wait yesterday on the mountainside, the troublesome ride back in the dark, I don't know, it might be the altitude. But uh, right now we are, uh, the guide wants to tell me something. Yeah, I'm back. He wants the scope, maybe he spotted something. But even though I'm feeling not so well, it's still amazing scenery. And that helps. clear misses to a beautiful ibex buck. We've been riding for about 45 minutes up the steep mountain, doing zigzags all the way. We crawled the last 200 meters up to this rock, got here out of breath, splitting headache. There's about 20 ibex lying down 250 meters away. And the guide kept pointing and saying, ibex, ibex. But I couldn't see him because the buck was up between the large rocks all of a sudden they start this warning cry and go weep, weep, and they all get up and move up the mountain. The buck runs across some, some uh, a slide, a rock slide, about 150 meters further away. So that means he's at 400 meters. <sighs> he's standing still. It's a good shot. I, I think it's a good shot or I feel it's a good shot. But the first shot is, is right in front of him. So the bullet has drifted to the right. He doesn't react. I reload. I don't, re I don't think I corrected for the wind. So I shot again, again in front of the ibex. So he started running. 
I tried a third shot on the run, but that was that was silly because uh, that was a clean miss. So now I'm just left here with a great feeling of uh, disappointment in myself. It would have been the perfect end to a difficult stalk up here in the sun, beautiful mountain. I'm so upset with myself because there's no one else to blame. But uh, that's also part of being a hunter and it's part of perhaps more likely it's a part of being a hunter out of my own comfort zone up here in the mountains. But uh, I'm pretty bummed about this. Der er det anser i stedet. Hold nu kæft. Se! Hvad er det her? Ja! Tillykke! Jeg var også skud! Skud nu om skud, mand! Hallo? Lieve? Ja, ja, ja. Dat is een nieuw man. Ja, dat is een nieuw man. Ja, dat is een nieuw man. Snaps. Het is meer zo hard gehad. Ja, het is meer zo hard. Ik sterf hem even niet aan. Ja, det er løgnet. Og det er løgnet. Det er sådan her. Der er lidt løg i os, ja. Det er sådan. Nej. Det er ikke løgnet. Eller lidt mellemgulv. Det er sådan, det er sådan. Skål. Skål. Lad os tro, vi er. Yeah.
shoot? Can I shoot? Shoot! Shoot! Yes! Yes! Christian! Hvad gjorde den så, da jeg skulle? Jamen, så sprang den, og så prøvede jeg at give den en smule. Næsten ny. Men så bytte vi plads. Ja. Det er det, der er rigtigt. Så går vi bare. Fuck, hvor er det irriterende. Og jeg lå bare og havde så godt hold på en over til venstre. Og så sagde han, at jeg skulle tage den til længst til højre. Og den havde jeg ikke set først. Det er 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 Ah, det er sådan et smøde, der er Ja. Sådan et smøde, der er Wow. That was every bit as chaotic as we had feared. Uh, we were supposed to shoot at the same time. So Christian and I, we uh, talked about uh, a plan where we went one, two, three, go.
go and then we should try to talk about which one to shoot. But the guides divided us, so I was on the left rock, or left side of the rock, and Christian was over on the right. The guy, guide pointed out an ebex for me to shoot at, and I asked him several times, is it okay to shoot? And then he says loudly, shoot! And I took that as a command to both Christian and I. I fired my first shot, felt it was good, it was about 300 meters away. They kept moving. I think I ended up shooting four shots. Uh, and at the end, he said, good. I ran around the rock, tried to help Christian shoot at his goat because that, or the Ibex, that didn't drop. We're not sure what happened over there, but uh, maybe I just shot my first Ibex. But until I see it, until I can touch it, it's not really a reality yet, but the butterflies in my stomach are telling me it's, uh, it might be good. So um, now we're gonna walk up the mountain and see if we can find an ibex, hopefully two. It would be perfect to shoot an ibex with my good buddy Christian, but uh, I'm not sure what happened. We'll see. Tre, 300 til at starte med, og så tror jeg, at sidste skud er på cirka 400, der når jeg ikke at dreje, der holder jeg bare lidt over. Men det vil undre mig, hvis det første skud ikke også har ramt, for det synes jeg fandme var, øh, var et godt skud. Eller, det føles sådan, og han stod sådan, han stod op på en sten med forbenene. Og stod så flot og mægtig ud. We've hiked up this mountain for about 500 meters. All the time I'm looking for blood or tracks or didn't see anything. Starting to doubt myself what actually happened or happened. And now the guide, 20 meters away, just found my Ibex. I'm so so happy and so emotional. This has been a dream trophy for me for so long. And now it's just 20 meters away. Let's go look. Gut.
Ah. So beautiful. It's a uh, one, two, three, four, about six year old buck. Maybe not the biggest of, of horns or the biggest trophy, but for me, this Ibex trophy, my dream trophy, it's never been about the size, it's more about what the trophy represents. And it's, it's all of this, the mountains, the being out of breath, the headaches, the crazy horse rides in the dark and up and down steep mountains, living basic at camp and just being so far out of my own comfort zone. That is what this trophy represents for me. And I couldn't be happier. Beautiful curved horns. A long, dark beard. And a beautiful coat. And then these stubby, strong, short legs, which just carries them everywhere, up and down. Unbelievable, unbelievable. 